All right. I think that we are live and uh, having already a great time. So that's perfect. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Allie. I'm the director of content marketing at Census. I'm just going to give you all a little bit of an overview of today's webinar while we wait for the last uh, few people to join us. Um, we'll be covering what operational analytics at every stage looks like as part of our joint event series on the modern data stack with the folks over at Snowplow Analytics. Uh, we did an event with them last week and we'll be doing an event with them next week. Uh, and you should be getting email reminders and all that kind of good stuff about all the recordings and everything registration. Uh, but for today, I'm excited to announce our two speakers, uh, Jeff Sloan and Kara Bestline. Uh, Jeff is a data strategist and product manager working to help businesses realize the competitive advantage of data. Currently, he is a customer data architect here at Census, and he is calling in from Mexico today. So if there's a little bit of a video lag, uh, don't worry. You'll be getting the presentation and everything afterwards. And then Kara is a product manager over at Snowplow. She's focused on sources and destinations. Previously, she led Snowplow's implementation team, working with customers across different industries and verticals on designing and implementing their data, strat data collection strategy. Before Snowplow, Kara gained some experience in consulting and finance. Uh, for today, Jeff and Carol will cover what you need to know about operational analytics from a high level before diving into what it looks like for each stage of data usage using an example company. If you have any questions, please drop them in the chat in the questions section. I will answer them at the end of the presentation. And with that, I will turn it over to our resident data experts. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ali. And again, a welcome from me as well. Um, so before we dive in, uh, really, there's probably a couple of things we need to define. Uh, first of all, what is operational analytics? Uh, and then also, what are the different stages uh, that we're going to talk about today? So let's start. What is operational analytics? Um, operational analytics is really analytics that um, informs the day-to-day -day decisions uh, with really the, the aim of improving an organization's operations. So this idea of using data to improve how you engage and interact with your customers, how you optimize business processes, et cetera. Um, and so that obviously sounds great, uh, but, but how do you go about doing that? Um, and to, to answer this, we really have to zoom out a little uh, and see how operational analytics fits into a company's wider data strategy and wider data stack. Uh, and that's where we want to introduce the, the modern data stack, which probably most of you are quite familiar with already. Uh, but really, that's a, a set of tools that companies use uh, to build kind of a, a strategic data capability uh, and, and really a, a tool set that lets them uh, leverage data across the organization, ideally in a self-serve manner. So empowering other teams uh, to use data uh, to inform their processes um, and this is typically the types of tools that companies have in their modern data stack. Uh, so they'll have uh, tools to ingest data from all of the various places that they interact with their users or customers from. Uh, so that will be first party applications, like things like your website, um, your mobile applications, any backend systems you have, that will be any uh, SaaS tools that you use uh, to manage your processes or your, your customer engagement. And then of course, any database you have, transactional databases, CRMs, et cetera. Um, and really there's two types of, or two ways of getting that data into the data warehouse, your central place of, of managing all that data. And that's one stream ingestion. Uh, so using tools like Snowplow to collect events from both your first party applications and any uh, SaaS tools that support events uh, to get that real time feed of exactly what's happening uh, with your, your users and customers in all the various places you interact with them. And then of course also ETL tools like Fivetran uh, to get any other types of data that you need into the data warehouse. Once you have all the data, uh, data in the data warehouse, you might use a tool like Snowflake, uh, you then need to process that data. And really, it's about joining the different data sets together and preparing the data so that it can be leveraged for different use cases. Uh, and that's where tools like EBT are awesome that, that help you manage all of those processes, test those processes, version control those processes so that you know you have consistent um, data for all your various use cases. Um, and then um, obviously you have your traditional more uh, BI or analytics tools that can sit directly on top of the warehouse for analysis. Uh, and then you want to use a tool like Census uh, to send the data to any other tools that you might want to leverage that, that data in um, subsequently. So that's kind of very high level overview of the modern data stack and we'll kind of pick on the different tools uh, and use cases that might be served with this stack uh, throughout our presentation today. So this is more of a, a brief summary. 
Um, so then, as I said at the beginning, uh, we, we want to introduce what we mean by operational analytics, but we also want to talk a bit about the stages that we're, we're going to take you through. Uh, and here we really concocted something called the operational analytics usage curves really to describe how a company might leverage this type of analysis uh, across their journey. Uh, and so we, we might consider a, a low usage uh, use case where a company is just getting started with operational analytics and some of the challenges they might face, but also some of the benefits pits they might be able to reap very early on uh, in this journey. Uh, then a, a medium usage um, where the company might be powering multiple use cases from the data warehouse, starting to, to reap those benefits of joining the different data sets in the data warehouse and, and, and being able to leverage the same data for different use cases. Uh, and then a, a high usage uh, where data is leveraged for critical use cases across the organization is sent to many downstream tools uh, and really that that single customer view and uh, the, the the highly joined and aggregated data can be leveraged in all the different tools uh, consistently. And so with that, I think I will hand over to Jeff, who's going to talk you through our example company and the first stage. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Cara, for introducing operational analytics and this usage curve model that we're going to walk through in the presentation. I'm going to get started by getting started with operational analytics and walk you through this example company and their journey as they start taking advantage of their data and populating that in downstream systems. So our example company, we're going to call Sandy Seats. Summer is very much on the mind in the Northern Hemisphere, so that's why we have this company here. It's a two-sided marketplace for beach chair rentals that offers two products, a mobile app marketplace to book beach chairs and a mobile app that helps beach chair providers keep track of their bookings, uh, maybe keep track of employees that are managing the bookings, et cetera. Sandy Seats makes a small cut for each beach chair booking. So Taking a look at Sandy Seats earlier on in their journey, in their data journey, and their journey as a company, their operational stack might look something like the following. A set of common tools that are used for things like customer support, email marketing, and in the case of Salesforce, for example, enterprise sales and account management. Um, so for example, beach chair renters that might have more than 10 seats might be, uh, uh, might benefit from an enterprise offering or a paid offering for the, the application for beach chair, beach chair renters. Um, in these specific domains, we can imagine a couple initial analytics use cases. So on the Zendesk side, we can imagine that support teams really want to prioritize tickets from their most valuable customers. Maybe, for example, Sandy Seats has a model where the most valuable customers to the, to, the, to the business make up the bulk of their revenue and they want to make sure that they have white glove service. Within an email marketing tool like ActiveCampaign, they might want to trigger reactivation campaigns when individuals no longer are coming back and opening up the application. And that might be different, for example, between customers who are trying to book beach chairs and those who provide beach chair rentals themselves. And finally, for that enterprise sales team, they might want to be able to identify upsell opportunities based off of signals within the application that indicate, hey, the, the beach chair renters that are on the app are actually, they could benefit quite highly from the enterprise offering. But let's talk about uh, email marketing in particular and what it would take to make this happen. Trigger reactivation campaigns based off of behavioral data. Um, so the stack to support this might look something like the following. We're tracking data vis-a-vis -vis something like Snowplow, uh, tracking app opens and screen scene, streaming that data into a Snowflake warehouse. Similarly, we might be ETLing data out of the Postgres database that backs our application into Snowflake. And then with that data housed in Snowflake, a simple SQL query joins that data together for, for usage in a tool like Census that'll send the data onto active campaign. Um, and specifically what we're looking for here is just to join email, find the user's email, how many times they've opened the app in the last 30 days, and maybe even also bring in the customer type from the Postgres database itself. So that way within active campaign, these reactivation campaigns can be triggered automatically and differentiated based off of that customer type. Um, all that's required to do this here is just to write the SQL query once this data is in Snowflake, uh, to join these two data sets together and then power many, many important use cases downstream for your marketing team. 
So what's required here, realistically, once the data is housed in Snowflake, it's just somebody that knows some SQL and can join these tools together. There's not much necessary in terms of setting up production processes just to get started, simply writing the SQL query and letting a tool like Census run that SQL query and then populate the results in your downstream tool is an effective way of just getting started with initial use cases. So again, that individual might be somebody that could be on your revenue ops team. It doesn't necessarily need to be a data analyst in, in particular or a data engineer, just somebody that especially is close to the use case, knows what data might be valuable for, for those downstream tools to power individual use cases. And with that, we kind of move on to the next phase of operational analytics usage, just powering different use cases across the business from your data warehouse. And I'm going to pass the mic back to Kara to walk us through this phase of the operational analytics usage curve. Awesome, thank you. Um, so Sandy Seats have been very successful. Uh, all of their email marketing is doing great. And so they have lots more users. Uh, they've grown and they're now 200 people. Uh, they obviously now have much more than just a mobile app. They also have a desktop app and a, a mobile site. Uh, and also their um, data use cases have much expanded. So now they have a much bigger product team who wants to understand in detail how uh, people are leveraging the product, where they're getting stuck, et cetera. Um, they have a bigger marketing team who's expanding out to lots more different channels, uh, for example, paid ads and, and wanting to automate those. So really, the everything is bigger, lots more tools and, and lots more people. And so we want to explore what operational analytics might look like at that stage. So first, let's look at the operational setup. So the different tools that the company might have at this stage. So in marketing, again, there's now uh, different marketing tools. They still use Active Campaign, but they now use Facebook ads, Google ads, Braze, similar tools like this. Uh, the product team have now bought a product analytics tool. Maybe they bought Mixpanel. Uh, sales now uh, keep track of all of their, their leads in, in Salesforce. Finance have tools. Customer success have various tools to engage with customers, Zendesk, Intercom, Vitaly, um, different tools to, to make sure that they're, they're engaging with their customers. And obviously, these tools represent different use cases. Uh, so marketing team might, for example, look at um, joining offline conversions and, and powering um, more, more leads in various places. Uh, product might want to better understand funnels and understand exactly where in, in certain processes uh, people are dropping off. Sales might be really focused on uh, lead scoring so that they can spend their time on the most valuable leads. Uh, customer really want that 360 view of their customers understanding exactly where in the customer journey are people struggling, where could things be improved, where can we identify that uh, reten those in retention and upsell drivers, etc. Uh, so again, we want to focus on one specific use case, and in this case, uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about product analytics and really focus on funnel analysis. Um, and so let's, as an example, uh, look at the understanding the booking flow. So again, like maybe users signing up and then uh, trying to book a chair. Um, and we want to understand exactly how is that flow performing? Where are people dropping off? Uh, what are the key points where we could improve the experience and, and create a higher conversion rate? And for that purpose, uh, we, we might then uh, want to uh, collect data from various different places. So of course, we need to collect data from our applications. So that's where our snowplow tracking will come in handy and we'll, we'll capture all the different interactions uh, people have on the website in the mobile app to understand how people go through the journeys there. But then we also want to maybe include some of the other data from the SaaS tools. Um, so for example, we might want to see if any support tickets were created in that initial funnel and also add that data in uh, via Snowplow into the data warehouse. We'll then probably have a, a DBT model running to process that data, join the different data sets together, uh, maybe augment all of the, the event level data with some um, user level metrics that we get from a transactional database or our CRM system uh, using Fivetran. Uh, and then we we want to use the, like once we've enriched and, and modified the data and joined the data in that way, we want to send that off to, to Mixpanel using census. Uh, so that in Mixpanel, we have that complete view of the, the customer journey through that initial booking funnel uh, so that we can then exactly identify maybe where there are challenges or what's going really well uh, so we can improve that from a product perspective. 
And I think something that you can already tell is gonna is gonna be key here is the data modeling in the data warehouse. So once you have like you have all those different data sets going into the data warehouse, you've got your um, you know your behavioral data from coming from Snowplow, and then you've got other events coming in uh, from your from your other tools, and then also you have your um, kind of CRM data and, and transactional data that has more um, information about the user and maybe things they've done in the past. Uh, and you want to join all that data together, and then you want to you probably have different levels of aggregation to think about this. Uh, so you could imagine that, for example, in Mixpanel, uh, you obviously want some of the event level data so enriched with those varying factors uh, so that you can see exactly how did people move through uh, but then you probably also want to look at the data from a people uh, at the people level so understanding well for a given user what does uh, what do all the different interactions like uh, look like or even for a given company if there's companies that are uh, renting chairs etc uh, and so really modeling that data joining it and then creating those various different uh, levels of aggregation will help you power the different use cases and the different tools uh, that census that can push out uh, to all of those different destinations Uh, and so who is needed for this in this case? Uh, so at this point, you probably have a, a small data team uh, with some analysts, data engineers, analytics engineers, uh, really that are focused on getting all of the data into the data warehouse using tools like Snowplow and Fivetran, uh, and then joining and modeling that data in the data warehouse uh, so that it, so sensors can pick it up and push it to the various downstream tools. Uh, and so really like the analytics engineering becomes very important here, designing those data models uh, that run in the data warehouse uh, to power uh, the various use cases, uh, but also data engineers who have some understanding of, of where the data uh, is coming from, where does it go, and, and maybe how does it need to be um, served in the various locations. Um, but again, not a huge team needed and really the the point here is that that team can really focus on modeling the data deriving insights deriving value in the downstream tools uh, rather than being busy kind of connecting the pipes uh, because that's where where tools like snowplow and census really come in getting that data into the warehouse and then taking it out again um, making sure those processes are smooth and reliable cool and so then Hopefully, <laughs> Sandy seats will, will grow even more, uh, leveraging all this data to kind of power their decision making. Uh, and so at some point, they end up at a place where they're powering critical use cases across the organization uh, from that single source of truth in the data warehouse. And what that looks like, uh, Jeff will tell you. Oh, Jeff, I think that you're on mute. There we go. Can you hear me now? All good? Yes. Yep, all good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you for that. So um, at this point, Sandy Seas has grown to a global empire covering all the world's beaches, um, a real powerhouse of industry. And to do so, they've probably done a couple things. I mean, number one, they've expanded geographically, but they might have acquired other similar businesses in different locations. Um, and these different businesses and, or different teams in different geographies might be using very similar tools to power very similar use cases, but for their set of customers. So we can imagine a world where uh, the enterprise stack has many, many tools. Uh, that are covering tangential use cases or in some cases the same use cases so for example in our uh, kind of product analytics universe we can imagine where some product teams love to use mix panel and some product teams love to use amplitude for their particular use cases and uh, maybe individually these have features that are important to them or maybe the teams have experience with them and because the warehouse has now become more core prominent feature in the business's integration strategy, it's actually possible to serve both of these sets of downstream tools from the same pot of data and empower both of these teams to, to operate in the way they prefer to. Same thing goes for uh, populating data in different CRM tools or different email marketing tools, for example. So how does the data stack evolve to permit this? In this case, our integration story has gotten potentially even more complex. 
for example. Uh, we might not just be pulling data directly from databases. We might be pulling data from uh, event buses like Kafka, uh, which are, are kind of the preferred option for connecting interactions and events between production databases. We might have some databases that are still getting populated directly into Snowflake. Um, but really, the story is more or less the same with a couple different additions. Data is being collected, modeled, transformed in Snowflake, um, and then being propagated out via a, uh, a tool like Census to empower teams to perform their product analytics in the tool of their choice. The key differences here is because the data integration and processing story might have gotten a little bit more complex, there might be internal SLAs around when this data needs to get uh, propagated to tools like Mixpanel and Amplitude. At this point, we typically see the introduction and use of an orchestrator like Airflow that's going to be coordinating the activities between the loading of data into the warehouse, the processing of that data, Perhaps there's even a machine learning model that performs some sort of lead scoring or customer health scoring as well. And then only after those processing steps and the loading steps have completed, then triggering a census job to send that data onwards to, to downstream tools. Similarly, the amount of data that has entered the warehouse has grown a tremendous amount. And it's at this phase where, where companies are investing quite heavily in data monitoring and alerting to avoid having incidents and, and, and keep track of the, the assumptions that they've made on that data that lead to that data being processed effectively for, for those product analytics use cases. In that case, we see tools like Monte Carlo get adopted, but there's also plenty of activity within this space where other companies are jumping in to help provide more monitoring and alerting uh, on top of data volume growth um, or different assumptions being broken within the tables within your warehouse. And that's going to surface insights for the data team, your analytics engineers, and your data engineers to keep track of those pipelines on their end. But on the customer facing end, this explosion in data volume also offers uh, another challenge, which is just finding the thing that the team is looking for. Uh, data cataloging, in this case, becomes incredibly important and useful. And we see teams adopt tools like Amundsen. It's an open source uh, project out of Lyft. Um, to help expose these data sets and make it easy to, easier to search for and find the relevant data that, uh, that's needed by, say, an analyst or a particular team, to then slice off and then send for, for downstream use cases. So this modeling picture at this phase, if we had centralized the data for, for say, in, into events and companies and people objects, um, oop, there we go, uh, then at this phase, we might need to then start sharding off particular parts and components for specific use cases. So if we have all of our events in a consolidated stream, some of these events might be really relevant for one of Sandy Seat's teams, say the team that focuses on the onboarding journey for customers. And some of these events might be really important for, uh, for the checkout team. And some of these events are going to be important for both teams. Pulling from this single pot of data, they can kind of slice off individual uh, views or, or marts for their particular use case. With, the, with any types of embedded analysts that are in those product teams leading the charge and deciding what data is necessary. So what team, what type of team is necessary to make this happen? At this point, you're probably imagining there are larger sets of teams and capabilities necessary here. You have different types of analysts that might be embedded throughout the organization. They might be centralized at, at your company. Um, teams of data engineers that are making sure that the infrastructure is, is speaking to each other and the different, uh, the different tools are continuing to interact well together, optimizing that infrastructure for, to, to manage costs uh, and performance individuals like data product managers who are helping to coordinate between different teams and ensure that core data assets are being created uh, and, and kind of challenges of users are being met with uh, different tools along the way. Analytics engineers focusing again on modeling that data, data scientists as well, interacting with that data and creating features, um, models that, that create things like lead scores and customer health scores. Um, or building data products off the back of that centralized data as well. 
again, the effort here and the emphasis is typically on joining and modeling that data as much as possible and empowering those individuals to join and model that data as much as possible to power their, their downstream use cases, whether that's analytics, data products, or in, in this case that we've been talking about quite specifically, operational analytics. So we've seen Sandy Seats evolve into a global empire of beach chair rentals and uh, walk through kind of various phases as their data warehouse has grown and become a core figure in their data integration strategy uh, for, for the purposes of operational analytics. What are some of the things that we'd love for you to walk away with? Uh, and we, we have four, four main takeaways here. One is that, as you've seen, the warehouse as a central focal point empowers multiple downstream use cases as a single source of truth. It almost operates as the brain of the business and becomes more and more important, more and more critical as the source of truth for, for multiple different downstream tools as, as teams lean into this approach and as teams develop their both their analytics capacity but also their operational analytics capacity. The stack of modular components that we started with ends up being quite future-proof. And as new use cases come in and new challenges arise, you're able to plug in new tools that interact with that existing stack quite easily in order to solve new challenges, whether that's version controlling your data models, whether that is exposing new data cataloging and data monitoring solutions, or new data integration solutions to load that data into your, your warehouse in the first place. The upfront people costs are actually quite small. Just to get started, it just takes a single use case, a single field in a, in a destination system, and somebody that can join that data together, write a SQL query off of maybe existing data that exists in that warehouse, and ultimately send that onwards to a downstream system. And as use cases grow and dependency grows, more and more people can be added into the team to help support this. And finally, the key piece here is that by leveraging these different tools in the stack, human efforts are ultimately devoted to curating the valuable data as much as possible and not towards creating the pipes that move this data around. Um, instead, it's interpreting the signs of uh, what uh, data monitoring tools are telling us or coming up with taxonomies of how data should be organized so that way it's easier to find that data onwards and data cataloging tools, valuable uses of your humans creating bespoke um, kind of pieces of knowledge that are, are, are necessary for you and competitive advantages for you and your business. So just one last thing, let's say all this made a ton of sense to you and you're just wondering to yourself, like, where do I get started? My organization uh, is at one of these phases uh, in terms of maybe it's adoption of tools, but maybe not operational analytics. Where do I begin? And there's kind of like three recommendations that we would make just to get started here. Um, one is just pick the tiniest use case possible, like one field, one destination that empowers a, a say a new set of um, activities and operations for, for your teams. So as we saw in our first use case and in kind of the getting started case, all it required was a little bit of data, just a single SQL query or even a single field, just app opens or even customer type can power tons of personalization and value for uh, the CRM team and ultimately for your customers. Another option, especially if you've already gone down the track of analytics and you have plenty of dashboards, is to find out what dashboards your operational teams are using most often. Um, every time an ops person is opening up a dashboard, that's amazing, they're getting value out of that data, but are there workflows that they could better trigger vis-a-vis -vis having that data directly in the tool that they use every day, whether that's a tool like Zendesk or Salesforce or uh, Marketo, whatever it is. Um, you'll oftentimes find that kind of single field, single destination use case by looking at these dashboards and the access patterns um, of your users. And finally, this especially is, is true at the largest organizations. I guarantee even at small organizations, there are CSVs that are being downloaded and uh, upload it somewhere else for to power some core operational activity. Uh, it's just like a truth of that. And this is also a fantastic area to, to start investing in automating and version controlling and bringing some rigor to, um, because you really wanna be powering your key operational processes based off of kind of manual downloads and uploads, uh, subject to individuals you might leave and 
know the data processing steps necessary to, to kind of convert that download into the necessary upload. They might be the only ones aware that this is taking place in the first place. These are great use cases as well to kind of pull into the fold with operational analytics and, and tools like Census. Uh, so that way, this, this sees the light of day and the logic becomes formalized in a place that people can collaborate on and uh, contribute to. So that's that's it for the for kind of the, the content portion today. Um, we'll just kind of jump into any questions. Awesome, thank you, Jeff and Carr. Um, we have a couple questions for folks. I think this first one is probably best suited for you, Jeff. Um, Will asks, uh, what is the best way to ensure model consistency when you introduce an orchestrator such as Airflow? And do you typically see that orchestrator running DBT jobs? So in this case, model consistency, I guess I, I would be interested in, in understanding that a little bit. I'll take that a couple different ways. So one is for the use of uh, a tool like Census, one way to interact with the outputs of uh, a DBT job or even a scheduled SQL job within Airflow would just be to interact with the table itself. Uh, so rather than say running a uh, a specific query, limiting the, the logic out of a tool like Census and instead saying, hey, this logic is being version controlled and managed outside of Census and Census just plugs into that table. And that's that's the contract that's required there. It's just in, that there is that, that table and those columns do exist uh, at that point. Um, also, I would just say, you know, just be very, very cautious about when you, you start to, to add these additional tools, orchestrators definitely uh, factor into the mix and are really, really valuable, especially for those uh, managing SLAs and, and ensuring dependencies are managed uh, appropriately. Uh, but oftentimes we see people get away uh, quite well with the use of just DDT for a while um, and ensuring that you don't have multiple data processing steps occurring, say some are happening in Airflow and some are happening in DBT. Um, if that's centralized as much as possible within DBT, especially as long as you can, you can go, that goes a long way towards uh, avoiding having, say, multiple models that are doing the same thing. Um, and, uh, and you can kind of manage the, the, the data modeling chaos a little bit more effectively that way. Sweet, thank you. Um, and then, Kara, a question from Kai for you um, on plumbing. Uh, what plumbing already needs to exist to enable operational analytics? Uh, how much of the plumbing and movement of the pipeline is needed to get started? Awesome. Um, yeah, so that's that's a really good question. I think um, if you look at the really simple case, census picks up data from the data warehouse. So really the thing that's important is that you have a data warehouse that all of your data is going into. And so depending on what tools you use, um, that will look a bit differently. So if you use a tool that's already very event-based and is focused on getting the data into uh, the data warehouse, maybe a tool like Snowplow, but also tools like, like Segment, um, then like that portion is already taken care for, uh, for you and you can directly um, set up sensors on top of the warehouse. Versus if maybe you're powering a lot of your analytics from a tool like GA or Adobe or another analytics solution, then you might need some plumbing to actually get the data out of that um, solution and kind of put that in the data warehouse as your proxy event data that you're going to use to make some of these decisions that census will then uh, send on. So I think it, it really depends on what you're using uh, to understand how your users are engaging with your various products, uh, but also with any like third party tools that you use. So for example, if you're using Zendesk to, to manage your support tickets, um, if you have a tool like Snowplow, it can it can actually take the webhook data that comes out of Zendesk and put it directly into your Snowflake. So then again, like the plumbing, you don't really need any additional plumbing to that. Uh, versus if 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 you're using a tool like GA for your analytics, then uh, and you're just exporting the the event data from there, then you might need to set up either like a Stitch or Fivetran to get the data, a batch of data out of your support tool, uh, or you might have to set up some custom plumbing to pull data from an API. Uh, so it really depends on like what tools you're using to, to capture how people are interacting with you doing like your basic analytics but uh, at the beginning, uh, because then as long as the data is all in the data warehouse uh, and you can join it there, either just using simple SQL queries or when you're doing more complex things using a data modeling tool like dbt, um, 
you you can then plug sensors directly on top of that and sensors will do all the heavy lifting of getting the data out of the data warehouse and various stuff into the various downstream tools. Perfect. Thank you, Kai. Um, and then I am dropping in the chat a uh, link to the webinar that we're doing, the last one in our series with Snowplow next week. Uh, and that gets a little bit more in the weeds on the instrumentation side uh, that Car just touched on too. So it would be a really good resource if you have questions more about the existing plumbing. So there's that for folks who are interested. Um, and I think that's it on the question side. Uh, I can give folks another couple of seconds to drop any pressing burning questions they have in. Uh, but otherwise, I really appreciate everybody sticking through and uh, attending. And uh, Jeff and Cara, thank you so much for all the information that you've presented today. It was really fun to, uh, to sit there. Uh, thanks for having us. Well, awesome. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone.